Well, how do there, chums? Tis me, Captain of the Steves, and today, chums, I've got some No Man's Sky news, some Light No Fire news, I've got a bit of news for everything. Yeah, so we're going to be jumping over, we're going to be doing a bit of Sean Murray watch over on the Tinterwebs. So let's get on over there, shall we, people? So yeah, I've just scrolled back to just after the Game Awards. So you can see here, Light No Fire and No Man's Sky were both trending. Sean had himself a lovely packet of Doritos. And it's adorned with Starfield. Oh, the irony. Heck yes. Anyway, scrolling up a little bit further. And you can see here a picture of Sean with his team. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, including the Sean. Yes, why did I count them? There's a reason I've counted them, people. We'll get to that in a moment, because this was at the TGA after party. Yeah, and that's the Sean sort of Murray collaboration crew. They're the people that made Light No Fire. How do I know that? We'll get to that in a moment. There's Sean pictured with Todd of the Howards. Yeah, he called me the Do Do Joe Danger guy. You're having a laugh. He knows you made No Man's Sky, mate, because a lot of people are coming from Freaking his game, Starfield, over to No Man's Sky because they want that seamless universe experience. He knows exactly who you are. Oh, yes. Nice. Scrolling up a little bit further. And, uh, yeah, we've got this. Let's hope they do No Man's Sky. Yeah, okay. Uh, do a No Man's Sky. Cyberpunk 2077. What's that all about? Jeff Keighley. And I don't, I don't know what that is. I, I can't work that one out. Anyway, yeah, I'm scrolling up a little bit further, people. Keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. There is another picture of him with, um, yeah, the unison, No Man's Skyrim. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it does look that way, like light no fire, I guess. And because he said there was a giant, you know, game, you know, first timer, uh, yeah. <laughs> It, has he learned his lessons from No Man's Sky? Is what's getting ribbon, ribbed there, I think, people. He likes to retweet the same thing a couple of times. But yeah, there's a whole thing of him, you know, not learning from past mistakes. This is the bit that I wanted to play, people. With this guy right here, Scott, right there, there was No Man's Sky, a game we announced 10 years ago with this guy right here, Sean Murray. Sean, uh, looks like the content keeps rolling in 2024. What does the next decade look like for Hello Games? Well, to start with, uh, next year is going to be a really big year for No Man's Sky. Like you said, I've been working on it for 10 years now, and I still really love it, still really enjoy it. But what people don't know is that for the last five years, we've been working on something new. Oh, uh, another game? Yeah, something very different, something maybe more ambitious, um, you know, for... <laughs> Uh, Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a bit about it, Sean. Uh, well, for No Man's Sky, we generated a whole universe of kind of sparse, alien-looking planets. And that wasn't easy, you know, it was hard, but there is something that's much harder that we wanted to do. Uh, for our new game, we wanted to create an Earth, um, you know, something as varied a planet that is as varied as a universe, something bigger than Earth, something with, you know, mountains, real mountains, not video game mountains, but mountains that are miles high, taller than Everest, that when you climb to the top of them and look out, you can see rivers and canyons and continents, you know, you can see oceans. So it's just like an open world planet kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, the first real open world. Right, something without boundaries. Uh, and we're gonna let everyone play in it together. It's, you know, a place where people can live out their sort of adventures together. Well, we can't wait to uh, take a look at it. We, we have anything tonight or future? Or... <laughs> yes, yeah, so, so we have a trailer. Oh. Um, and, you know, it's quite a small team that's working on us. Yeah. There's about a dozen of us. We're, actually, everyone's here, the, the, everyone from the team is here. Uh, we're s uh, we're very excited to share this. You and I have been talking about this one for years. Yeah. So he said they're his team that are all there, about a dozen of them. I counted 18. Maybe some of them bought their partners with them or something. Maybe that's not the whole team. Maybe there is only 12 people working on it. But I often get asked, well, how many people work at Hello Games? And do you think everybody's going to be working on this? And blah, blah, blah. 
In 2020, over on Company House, they listed at roughly 37 employees. If you jump over to LinkedIn, they've got 50 odd employees, about 51. But some of those are the landlords of the freaking building. So it's hard to actually get a rough count. But I, I think it's safe to say that there's about 40 people working there. So even if there is 18 people that we just counted, that's still not quite half of the studio is what I'm getting at people. But some of the people on, on LinkedIn are also games testers too and quality testers. They're not really devs or anything like that. So there we go. Anyways, yeah, so that's pretty much all I wanted to hit up on there. So that's all that done, which is lovely jubbly. Keep scrolling up. There's loads of stuff here about, you know, light no fire. It's all over the place, light no fire right now. I don't know what that's all about. Feces slapped against the wall, but it's freaking disgusting. Look, they've even walked away in it. It's footprints. And this is nearly as big as their freaking footprint. That's, it's got to be a record. Yeah, environmental storytelling in LA. Ouch. Yeah, I don't think it's got anything to do with their new IP. Now, it does make me wonder whether some of these uh, books of yesteryear might have something to do with what we might expect inside of said game because he did say it's got fantasy elements that we all grew up on and loved and i know that he loves those pages by story by number type books and stuff but there we are and then he smuggled a pickle back into the country i have no idea what that's all about uh, a hipster deli gave me a pickle in a little baggie i don't understand the mission but i'm trying to bring it home with me airport security acting real weird about it but there's nothing in the rules about pickles my guy <laughs> the craziness but anyways there we are about evil sized skeletons and oceans and stuff like that and then him running away yeah uh, maybe he has said too much but maybe he said too little i suppose we'll already know and there he is walking down la with a massive great big screen <laughs> mentals got you i'm loving this artwork whoever made this fan made artwork is beautiful lovely job there there's a signature down there Re ryogen nice work ryogen yes and here's sean heading back to the office all suited and booted up it's not sean it's just an animated gif he used but yeah it's very snazzy but yeah it looks like they're basking in the uh, sunlight that is the spotlight for their latest game light no fire and yeah got quite a lot going on over here as well thank you for contacting steam support diddly diddly d lovely jubbly yeah Coolios. Lots and lots of stuff going on over on Sean Murray Watch. But this is the other thing that was quite interesting. Sean Murray actually tweeted out to Phil Spencer. That, oh, look at Phil Spencer, how much time he spent inside of Xbox games, including Starfield. And he's the go-to guy. Phil Spencer actually replied to the Sean of the Murrays. And that's quite interesting. I'll get to the reply in a moment. I'm really liking this Lego sort of ship at the moment. If you can go and vote on this, there's a chance that it would actually come out in the Lego store and people would be able to order it, including me, because I would actually buy this. This I would buy. Freaking heck, yes, I would. It's very cool. Yeah, more artwork by Rio Jin. Nice work, Rio Jin. Heck, yes. And Sean actually gave your name this time. That's nice of him. And keep going, keep going, keep going. Here we go. Yeah, salute to Mondo. Made me laugh, and congrats on the amazing unveil of Light No Fire. Inspiring ambition from you and the team. Okay. Now, part of me is wondering, you know, ever since No Man's Sky came out on the Xbox, I mean, Xbox got one of those limited edition type helmets that had the big X in it, and you know, Nintendo Switch got a lovely Nintendo Switch ship. When it came over to the PlayStation VR, it would have been nice if they gave us some sort of helmet that looked like the VR helmet or a multi-tool that looked like the Move controllers. But we didn't get anything like that when it came over to PlayStation VR 2. Or even when it got the next-gen update, they didn't give us a PlayStation helmet or something to recognise the PlayStation players. It almost feels maybe, you know, there was a very rocky launch of No Man's Sky. And I'm only, I'm only speculating, but maybe the relationship with Sony isn't as good as it was with say xbox or how xbox is now and i'm wondering whether that might play into things on the launch of uh, light no fire i'm wondering whether that might go to steam first because that's the only place you can wish list it right now and it's the only place where you can find it with online presence other than the, uh, their own website whether it might release on steam for pc 
then go to Xbox and then come to PlayStation as a staggered launch so they can introduce more players to make sure that their load balancing on the servers is okay and multiplayer and crossplay if they introduce crossplay all stands up I think it could be staggered and I think that could be the order that it goes in but anyway there's lots of other posts here and uh, there is another post that's quite interesting because uh, sure, oh, that's a lovely bit of artwork. Very nice bit of artwork there. But yeah, there is another post that's quite interesting, which is patch notes. I mean, we've got the holidays and patch notes. Here's the patch notes here, actually. Let's hit up the patch notes. Boom. So there's a couple of patches that have come out. So fix an issue where the NPCs will get stuck in the floor. That sounds painful. And a few other patches. Ah, that one there about exchanging your freighter. Somebody hit me up that on that just the other week. Sorry I couldn't answer your question. With autosave, it's not something that I really wanted to test myself, just in case I couldn't get my old freighter back. So, yeah. Um, but it looks like it's been fixed anyway. So, yeah, there we are. Some very critical patches by the sounds of things. My question B is, why would they be messing about with that if they haven't done something to freighters inside of game? I'm wondering whether there's going to be something on the horizon around freighters and maybe not so random on how you get your freighter in future is my thoughts and feelings on that one anyways i've done a poll over on my community tab here let me see if i can make this a little bit bigger for thee and the view of us there we go yeah that'd do actually one, one one notch back there we are so do you think the rollout of no uh light no fire will be staggered one platform at a time like no man's sky was or do you think it would be all platforms at once like the last campfire now, I have got 99 votes on there. It's just one shy of 100. Let's just pretend it's 100 for simple math. But yeah, 59 of those people out of those 100 say, yeah, they think it's going to be like um, the last campfire on all platforms at the same time. I think that's probably more likely the case. The only reason why I think they might stagger it is because of the multiplayer aspect and how integral the multiplayer aspect is in this game and how popular this game might be. So if you've got a load of players day one, flood all your servers, uploading bases, trying to run quests together, trying to get... It could just cause their servers to crash and burn into a freaking molten mess. So I'm wondering whether they will do a staggered approach. So next up, 23% are kind of in agreement with me, where it says perhaps PC, then Xbox, then PlayStation, 23%. Others that said same as uh, staggered as PlayStation, then PC, then Xbox later on, 13%. It's already on Steam, so I think it's going to be coming to PC and PlayStation perhaps at the same time. And then, yes, it could come to Xbox later, like No Man's Sky did. But I honestly think that Sean, has probably, Sean and team, and Hello Games, have probably got that better relationship now with Xbox. And they definitely have a better relationship with Azure, because that's where they farm all their multiplayer out to, Microsoft Azure. So... I would say this stands, I, that one to me makes the most sense if I was a developer, if I was Hello Games. But also being that the community want to experience this all at once and you don't want no spoilers or people being put off or whatever. I would say it would make more sense from the heart and for all the communities that you're trying to establish and build and get a footway into is to release it on all at once. I just don't think the technical... <sighs> They're not a AAA studio. They haven't got a freaking farm of servers. They've probably got a couple of servers at most. Hence why they've put multiplayer out to Azure on uh, No Man's Sky. Maybe to free up their own in-house servers for this new game. Unless they've done some massive server testing in the background that we don't know about. Because everybody that is doing it is on NDAs or something. Um, I, I'm hoping they've been tested to destruction. And I'm hoping that I'm wrong. But I honestly think it's this top option that we're going to see um, happen. And I honestly don't think we're going to see this happen until probably 2025. A lot of people are speculating 2024. I've already done a video on all the reasons why I think it's going to be 2024. Uh, well, 2025, sorry, instead of 2024. I'll put a video up there. Go watch that. Yes, it might upset a few people, but I think it's more realistic. However, if we see something happen over on Steam, if we see some options happening, so at the moment we can't even pre-order it. Okay, if there was pre-orders, and if we could see a certificate rating for the game, then yeah, I might be inclined to say yeah, six months. I think when we see pre-orders start happening, and we and we see a certificate rating come through, and maybe a few more trailers, maybe a few more interviews with Sean and the Murrays, so we even know what the gameplay is, 
we don't know what the objective of the game is. We don't know what the story is. Okay, it's a lovely planet, but what? 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 What do, what do we do? As soon as we've got a little bit of that, then I think it's safe to say six months to a year. But we haven't got that yet, so I don't think we're that far ahead, even though that they're doing advertising campaigns. You've got to think these advertising campaigns are driving up views on that video. Their trailer video has got almost 8 million views, okay? And they've got a YouTube channel that's got over a thousand subscribers. That could be monetized for all we know. It could have made up the money for all that ad revenue and then some. So why the fudge not invest the money back in into marketing? It's free, free marketing, the way they could look at it. So that's how I'm looking at it anyway. I don't I don't think it's a massive ask. I don't think it's money out of their pocket because they're probably using the money and momentum from that video trailer to freaking pay for all that marketing. Yeah, anyways, people, that's that's my two cents on it. Anyway, just as a reminder, these are the dates for the reruns of the expedition. Today is the 15th of December. So at some point today, people, the Singularity expedition is going to start. Begin to unveil the, the history and origins of the harmonic camps in this precursor to Echoes, a mystery that touches upon artificial intelligence, the will to exist, and the very nature of what it means to be alive. One of my favourite expeditions to date, people. Pole Star was probably my favourite one because you start on like a, you know, a freighter and it was a bit different. But this one is really good. I also liked Emergence because that brought in the giant worms and the, the worm babbies and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, and they got left in the game. But Singularity, you get the two heads, the Atlantean head and the Crimson head. And it, it does build into the lore. It's got a lot of lore in this one, a lot of story. So if you like lore and story, definitely hit this one up. The one I'm going to struggle to do is Cartographers because it runs over the festive break and me and Ivy are so freaking busy, I'm probably not going to get to do Cartographers. And Voyagers was probably my worst expedition of all time and I honestly didn't find it that good when it was the full-fledged Voyagers. Reduxes, they try to simplify them. If they simplify this one to make it so you actually find the creatures on the planets they should bloody be on, it's like there was one where you had to find a hot-blooded creature. I went to so many hot planets, lava worlds and uh, the ones with solarium on. No, I found it eventually on a freaking cactus world, which was only hot in the daytime and cold as hell at night. What was it doing on there? Anyways, that, that's kind of my little mini rant on that one. Yeah, yeah, it was a little bit freaking tedious. Anyway, people, I'm going to go and finish off my hot chocolate. It's a Milky Way hot chocolate today, people. Yeah, it's very nice. Yeah, I've got a lovely coffee machine. If you want to see my coffee machine, I've got a video on my coffee machine. <laughs> I'm playing over there. Yeah, it's great. Anyways, I've got my lovely merch mug. Check out my merch store because I've revamped all my merch in line for the new year and for Christmas. Made some more fun designs for each of my different aspects of my channel. Go check it out. I'm sure you'll see something you like there. Anyway, salute to Mondo. Cheery bye. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again.